the story of Robert de Villa. You know who that is? No, you don't, because I do. <laughs> uh, three months ago, I gave khutbah in Fort Worth. I haven't been to that masjid in four or five years, and they invited me for some reason, and I went. And I gave khutbah there. My khutbah was about dua. An Egyptian fellow comes up to me, a young man came up to me afterwards, he goes, Allah fulfilled my dua today. And I said, what's your dua? He said, my dua was that Norman Ali Khan should meet Robert de Villa. I was like, are you Robert de Villa? He goes, nope, I am not Robert de Villa. Robert de Villa is my friend. But I think Allah is fulfilling my dua. I was like, fire away, I want to know. Robert de Villa is a young man who lives in a town 40 minutes past Fort Worth. He's a, he was a farmer, young guy. And he was hit with some sort of genetic disorder that kicked in later on in his life. And he became paralyzed from the neck down. And he, was, he's actually, he lives in a nursing home. Uh, most people in that nursing home are 90 years, 100 years. They're really, really old people. And then there's you know, his room where he's paralyzed neck down. He's the only 30-something year old that is in the nursing home. Okay? And he's been in that nursing home for the last 10 years. His family got a computer for him that's voice activated so he can give voice commands, put a headphone on and Google stuff and search stuff so he can surf the web and find information. In his room, in his room, and by the way, staunch Christian family, the minister comes and prays for him every, every, you know, every week and things like that. And his best friend was in the bed next to him. One of his best friends. He became best friends because he met him at the nursing home. This person was also paralyzed and he needed a new liver. Okay, a liver transplant. He was waiting for a liver, liver transplant. And they used to talk about you know, God and things like that all the time. They were good friends. Finally, his best friend got a call that there's a donor available for the liver. So he's so excited. He goes, Robert, I'm going to miss you, but I'm going. I've got a, I've got a donor. So they take his friend and they go on the op, into the operation and his friend died at the operating table. Now his friend, uh, who's also a Christian, the, the deceased friend, his sister, took one of the, the amulets of his friend, a, a crucifix, and she gave it as a gift to Robert. This is a reminder of your old buddy. So he hung it on the side of his hospital bed. Robert de Villa lives a pretty decent life in there. The nurses take care of him. He's a happy guy. And one day he goes to sleep and he sees a man in his dream. That man says his name is Muhammad. And he says... Pointing at the crucifix, God did not send messengers so they would worship the messengers. God sends mes sent messengers so they could, you could worship God. And Jesus was just a man. He walked in the markets and he ate food. He walked in the markets and he ate food and the dream stopped. He only knows that Jesus was just a man. He knows there's a man that named Muhammad that said that to him. He said that messengers came so people could worship God and not the messengers. This is all he knows. So he starts Googling Muhammad. He finds Islam. He takes Shahada. When he takes Shahada, he wants to learn about the Quran. So he goes on these chat sessions and finds somebody needs to teach me Quran. He finds a brother in Egypt that he gets together with on Skype to try to learn Arabic. Learned the Arabic alphabet. Once he learned the Arabic alphabet, he learned to recite the Quran. He memorized 10 surahs from his hospital bed. Then he said, I'm beginning to memorize the Quran, and I'm beginning to learn about this prophet, but I need to understand the Quran. So he starts Googling how to understand the Quran. And for some reason, he ends up on my videos. And he starts watching my stuff. And he watched almost everything. And then he told, and then, here's the other, here's the kicker. In the nursing home, there was an Egyptian fellow that used to come in and do some repair, uh, you know, repair work. The Egyptian fellow has his own awesome story. The guy had basically lost faith. He wasn't religious. The nearest masjid to him was 50 miles away. So he didn't really go to Jum'ah much anymore. But he felt a spiritual vo void, so he started going to the church just to feel closer to Allah. It's raised Muslim. He goes to the church just to feel closer to Allah. He's passing by Robert's room one day and he hears وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ So he walks into his room and says, Robert, what are you listening to? Robert says, nothing, that was me. And the guy says, you're Muslim? He goes, yeah, I became Muslim. And now this friend is in shock. How does Allah guide someone in the middle of church town USA in a nursing home 
or the crucifix on the side of his bed that he doesn't even have the physical strength to move. And the guy himself says, I want to come back to Allah. So he tells him about his, you know, the friend he found online, Norman Ali Khan. So the Egyptian fellow starts watching my videos. And then he says, I wish I could meet him one day. And he says, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. And after five years, that Egyptian friend shows up at the same masjid that I haven't been to in four years. And after Jum'ah says, I think Allah wants to fulfill my friend's dua and my dua. So I said, I think he does. Let's go. So I took a few of us and we went. And we met with Robert. We had a beautiful conversation with him. And inshallah, uh, for, uh, for Eid, we're going to go to his, uh, his, his nursing home again. They were actually, the nursing home was pretty shocked. You're all here to meet Robert? I was like, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, why do you want to meet him? Uh, he's an inspiration. <laughs> we're like, okay, let me check if we can. And they had to call the, hosp- the, the, the hospice administrator and all this stuff. And then eventually let us in. And Robert's in shock. And then I meet with Robert. We're talking. And I was like, hey, Robert, so I heard you memorize some surahs. He says, yeah. Can you recite one for me? So he recited Surah Al-Asr. Not one of us was not crying. We're just in tears. When, uh, when somebody turns to Allah, when somebody turns to Allah, don't worry about the means. Guidance will come. Balance will come. I want to tell you some more about Robert because young guys are here. Young guys that play basketball. Young guys that are healthy. Young guys that have ambition. I told you, what's his paralysis from where to where? neck down. He has a special wheelchair that has to hold pretty much every part of his body in place. He can't just sit in a wheelchair. It holds his neck and it holds every other part of his body in place because he has no control over his limbs. And he has to have a special van where the wheelchair locks in so that if it goes through a bump or whatever, he doesn't you know, receive the shock. So he made a request. He wants to go to the Friday prayer. They didn't have the special van. So they put him in a regular van. And so he went in the regular van in a few bumps and his spine got even more hurt. He went to Jumu'ah. He came back in excruciating pain. And they said, I'm sorry, Robert, you're no longer able to sit in your wheelchair. You're going to have to stay in your bed for the next six months at least. If you see recovery, then you can get back up again. I met him in in that span. He had already been in that bed for for three months already. And the reason he was in that bed is he went to the Jumu'ah prayer. And he told me about the Jumu'ah prayer. He said, I've never felt more peace in my life then I was in that masjid. And you know what I'm going to do, Brother Norman? When I can, when I can sit in my chair again, I'm going to go to Jumar. I'm going to go to the masjid because I've never felt like that before. There's someone who has nothing but control over his, his mouth and his eyes. And he says, I only find peace in the masjid. And here we are. These masajid, I don't care what ideology, what school of thought, what they're talking about in the masjid, what fitna is there. I don't care, it's still Allah's house. Just go to pray. Don't go there to talk to people. Go there to talk to Allah. Just go to talk to Allah. You're, not, you're just going for you and Allah. That's it. That's it. Other things will come, but you're not going for them. You're just going there to find peace. You'll become different people. If Allah can guide Robert de Villa, Allah can guide everybody. And then he said, you know, sometimes I wonder why Allah put me in this position. And then I say to myself, what am I kidding? Allah has given me so much. I am so grateful for what He gave me. And if this is the way He was going to bring me to Islam, it's all worth it. So worth it. You have Muslims that lose a little bit of health. And they say, why is Allah doing this to me? And this man, I mean, if you would think, nowadays atheists argue because of suffering, there's no God. If one man has a position in a position to say, I, I don't believe in God. If there was a guy, why would I be in this position? It would be Robert de Villa. That guy would say, I don't believe in God. If there was one, why would I be in this mess? And yet he's in this position and I've never seen a face with more nur. Never. I've never seen a face that has more contentment on it. He's so satisfied with life. He's so happy. He's just happy. The last seven or eight khutbas I've given are actually based on one sentence per, each on one sentence that he said in his conversation. <laughs> Is that profound? He's, been, he's a teacher to me. I consider him a teacher. He's my sheikh. Somebody says, who's your sheikh? I say, Robert Davila. <laughs> really? Is that, a, is that a pizza place? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know. 
People, the guidance is all around us. You don't have to get worried about what's not there. There's plenty there. You know what Allah did for the people of the cave? You know He even guided them in where to sleep? You know He even guided them on where to turn? As the sun was coming, they turned away from it. As the sun came from the other side, they turned the other way. <laughs> Allah will guide you in your sleep when you make dua to Him. He'll even guide you in your sleep. Every toss and turn will be guided by Allah. Can you imagine? Who's, we shouldn't be skeptical in Allah's guidance. We shouldn't worry about how am I going to find balance. No, that's Allah's job to guide you. Your job is to talk to Him. Your job is to get sincere. That is the message I have for you. That is how we're going to find balance. Honestly. It's, you know, and if, once you do that, once you become sincere to Allah, Allah will open doors. Allah will give you friends. Allah will give you teachers. Allah will give you access to resources. All of which are going to bring you closer and closer and closer to Him and to the truth and make life better for the people around you. This is really the gist of what I wanted to share with you. I don't want to speak longer. I've spoken too long already. I love coming back to you.